Hello, my crafty friends. Well, as you can see, I have a bunch of packages of fabric here in front of me. This is fabric that <clears throat> I went through my stash of fabric and um, I was just trying to be realistic because I'm trying to get rid of stuff and how much, you know, of this kind of fabric do you really need when you do what I do? I don't sew clothes. I don't um, make quilts. I just like to have fabric to use in my fabric journal and in um, junk journaling and to make clusters and embellishments and uh, maybe journal covers, stuff like that. So I don't really need a lot of any one piece of fabric. And so I decided what I was going to do was get rid of half of everything I had. So each piece that I have, I've taken half of it and divided it again into smaller pieces and then put it in bags like this. Now, <clears throat> I did all of this. And as you can see, all of these bags are different. They all have different stuff in them and different kinds of fabric. And I did that because... As I was going through my stash, I kind of had stuff together, you know. Um, and so as I was going through it, I was just stacking them as they came, which would put things kind of in groupings of similar stuff. Like this is pre pretty much, or mostly all, um, well, no, it's not, but this one is mostly all fabric for um, upholstery fabric or drapery fabric. And I have quite a bit of that, little pieces of it. Um, this is mostly all um, just cotton fabric. In fact, these pieces right here, somebody gave to me along with numbers for patterns that they bought the exact amount they needed for this pattern for little girls, baby girls dresses. Um, when she had both of her sons before I, um, Darren and I got married. And when she found out that we were pregnant with Ethan, but we didn't know if he was a boy or a girl yet, she gave me all of this fabric. And she said, um, I can't use it because I've got boys and I'm not having any more, but you might have a girl. So here it is. Well, with Ethan, um, I didn't use it because it was, it was really a girly kind of fabric. And then when Hannah came along, my pregnancy with her was so bad. And the first two years of her life were so hard on both of us that um, I didn't sew anything. I was like, I'm not sewing her clothes. People are giving me clothes. I can find clothes at garage sales, at thrift stores, at resale marts. I'm not sewing clothes. Um, she has survived just fine without her mommy sewing her these cute little dresses. But I finally decided I have to let go of that fabric. So... <laughs> So this fabric is probably 25 years old. Um, it's just been sitting in my stash for 21 years. Uh, anyway, or 20 and a half, something like that. My son just turned 20. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so this kind of, you know, and some of it is like this is from jackets. And so some of it like this, I only had, I had one Christmas jacket and one kind of safari type jacket. And I kept half of the stuff from it and half of it I stuck in here. Well, um, that means that, you know, not everybody can get this. And, um, and that's fine because what I intended to do was just offer these packages and they have, like I put G1 on this one. And then you tell me which package you want. But the, this took hours and hours to do. And I got to thinking about the hours and hours it would take for you to tell me which packet you wanted and then me to tell you, oh, sorry, somebody else got that one. And then you to go back and watch the video and decide if you want a different packet or not. And then me to take it to the post office and see what it weighed to mail it to you. And all of that became very overwhelming. <laughs> Just the thought of all of that became very overwhelming. And so I went on live real quick yesterday and I asked some of the girls who I knew were interested in buying fabric if um if it would be okay if i just put everything filled up now i'm not going to use this one i'm going to use the one it's this size but it's a um it's a 
got the bubble wrap in it and it's plastic and so it expands easy and it won't tear if you've got it really full like this one might. Um, but it's this size of an envelope and just fill it full and um, and it cost this one cost seven thirty five to ship. But I probably would spend another 30 or 45 cents just wrapping it with tape so that it would get to you safely. The other one ships for $8. So that's what I've decided to do. This way, you know what shipping cost is. We don't have to go through that like we did on the napkins. And um, it just took a lot of time and energy to run back and forth to the post office to see what this one's going to cost because they all cost different. Um, not just because of the weight of the envelope, but because of where I was sending them. I'll give you an example of that. When I did the spinning boxes, um, for the people who wanted to take a spinning class, I um, had exactly the same stuff in every box. The boxes were exactly the same box. I bought them at Walmart. They were the same box. They all weighed one pound. I shipped them all, um, you know, first class to people. And I had four different prices that shipping cost me, depending on where they went. To the girls in Canada, they were $14.75. To some of the girls, they were $11.25. To one, that was $10.20. And to two more, it was $8. So, and it was exactly the same stuff. And all except for the Canada girls, it was all in the United States. But because it wasn't flat rate shipping, it not only is weight, but it is distance and whether they have to fly it or they can put it on a truck um, determines your shipping cost. So this way, if I do it in a flat rate envelope, it's the same, the same shipping cost for everybody. It's $8 per bag done. Uh, that's easy. Um, so that's what it's going to cost. Now you know in advance that one of these... Um, envelopes and I'm sure I can get more than one of these packages in one of those envelopes one and a half maybe two into one of those envelopes probably probably two um so we're gonna say eight dollar shipping and I'll fill it as full as I can without risking it breaking or something um so shipping is eight dollars if you're in the United States if you're I do have a couple of girls in Canada that I am gonna have to find out what shipping will cost because Flat rate doesn't work to Canada, or at least that's um, been my experience in the past. So I'll check on that. That's not an issue. But I don't want to check for 30 people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've spent enough time working on this already. I don't want to do that. So we're going to do the flat rate shipping. Um, and I think that'll be easier for you too, because you already know what shipping is going to cost when you decide whether or not to email me. Uh, so there's a couple of other things I need to talk to you about. One is, if you want to do this, you need to email me at talk to me at dl, that's an L, not a one, dlc96.com. And if you will email me and tell me you want a package, I'll put you in line. And um, the reason I have to put you in line is be not because I'm sorting the fabrics and giving certain people special stuff. It's because... There, I only have um, I only have this much lace, so only about the first um, the first ten people are going to get lace. The, if you're if you're more than ten down the line, you're not going to get lace because I just don't have that much. I do have some more of this kind of lace that's fun to use in clusters and on the jelly plate. So um, all of the packages will have something like this in them, one piece at least of this kind of thing. But, um, and that's fun to use too, but it's not, it's not the same thing. So I'm just letting you know that. And I don't want to have to ha deal with half the people on Facebook and half the people on email. So everybody, please email me. Um, that way, as the emails come in, that's where you are in line. And, um, as soon as I get those envelopes on Monday or Tuesday, I ordered a bunch of them. And they're supposed to come either Monday or Tuesday. When they get here, I will start filling them up and sending them out. I'm going to probably spend the rest of the weekend um, resorting this stuff um, <laughs> into, into, these, into the envelopes because I want to mix it up more if I'm going to do a grab bag style. 
That way you get a little bit of a lot of different things instead of choosing specific things that you want. Um, I'm hoping the grab bag style you will find fun and exciting and not think, oh dear. <laughs> and that's one reason I'm going to show you the kinds of things I have. So you will know that you will get a mix of some of these things in your grab bag and you'll kind of know what you're in for. Um, I don't want to, um, to have anyone disappointed. It's important to me that you're not disappointed because y'all are so important to me. Uh, so that's one reason why I'm going to all the trouble to unbag these and show them to you. Um, cause I do not want you to be disappointed in what you get. I did have one lady, um, email me after the napkin swap and say, um, and she, um, well, it was actually during the napkin swap, but I had already given out all of the napkins. So she didn't actually get any napkins, but she emailed me and she said that one reason she took so long to ask me about napkins was because the idea of having to decide how much money to give me above shipping bothered her. And she wanted to be fair. She wanted to make sure she gave me enough. She didn't want me to be disappointed or feel like she was cheap or any of those things. Um, and so she really wanted me to just say, okay, I want you to pay me $5 or $10 or $8 or $3 or whatever per deal of, of napkins. And that's what it's going to cost that plus shipping. Um, and somebody asked me to do the same thing with the fabric. Can you just tell me what to pay you? And, um, that way I don't have to be worried about if I'm giving you enough money. And I want so I want to really explain why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Um, I have, I have the blessing of being close to a thrift store and a lot of this stuff came from thrift stores and, um, and so I've been able to buy it, you know, inexpensively and, um, and I, now I, I need to get rid of some of it and I want to share it and I want to be able to share it with people who want it and need it and will enjoy it, but not everybody can afford to pay the same amount, um, because not everybody has the same amount of money for some people that flat rate $8 is stretching their budget. Um, I can't just send it out free. I wish I could, but I can't. So if you can stretch your budget to $8, but that's all you can do, I am okay with that. I do not want you to feel like you are uh, cheating me or, or um, not giving me what it's worth or whatever. I don't want you to think that I think you're cheap. I don't want you to think any of those things. If all you can pay is $8, I am okay with that. If you can pay a little more to kind of help for the amount of time I've spent going through this and doing this, that would bless me greatly. And I would appreciate that very much. But I don't want given a certain price to keep me from being able to bless somebody who could really use the fabric but can only afford the $8 it cost me to send it. Because what I paid for it is in the past. Um, and right now my future is getting rid of stuff and trying to clean up my studio. And so, um, so I'm, that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. I know it's weird to not give you a price. I know people have told me I could do an auction and I thought about that. Um, I enjoy going to those. I enjoy buying stuff on those auctions, but, but I do know that there are people who go to the auctions and watch, but they don't buy anything because by the time you buy it and the shipping, they can't afford to do that. Um, and, and I understand that completely. There's something that I've wanted for probably a year and a half that I would never buy. I would go to Etsy and I would look at them on Etsy. I would go to eBay and I would look at them on eBay and I would just never think that, um, that it was what I wanted was worth that much money con compared to my budget. Um, I told him yesterday, I'm a thrift store girl, not an antique store girl. I like antiques. I love antiques. I love to go to antique stores, but I rarely buy anything in an antique store because it doesn't fit my budget. And that's what this is about. I want what will fit your budget. Uh, that's what I want. So uh, I want you to do what fits your budget. And um, I went to, uh, to Tanya's live sale um, on Thursday night. And um, I was able to get the thing that I've been wanting for a year and a half at her sale. But the only reason I could do it 
was because the people who bought got napkins, several of them sent extra money and not just the postage money. So they blessed me so that I could get that from Tanya. And that was one of those piano um, roll things. I've always wanted one. And ever since I knew they were a thing people were doing art with like a year and a half, I've wanted one of those old player piano roll piano things. And I've never made myself able to spend the money to get one. But Thursday night, I could get one from Tanya. Um, and so I was excited about that. So I want the blessing to go both ways. I want you to feel blessed that you got your money's worth. And, um, and I want to be able to bless people who can't pay more than shipping. So that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. I know that's a long explanation. I'm sorry I took that long and I haven't even shown you the fabric. But all of those things are important. How to get a hold of me, um, what to pay, those things are important. Now, I know some of you do not have PayPal and you want to send me a check or cash, and that is fine. I will set you a bundle aside, and as soon as I get your check or your cash, I will put it in the mail to you. I do not mind that at all. If you want to send money from PayPal, this is the address for my PayPal account, too. Just do that and say, send it to a friend. We're good. Um, and you put in there, you know, fabric, fabric grab bag or whatever. Okay, so now let me show you the kinds of things I've got because um, I want to do this quickly. Um, and I'm good. Like I said, I'm going to go back. They won't be packaged like this. I'm going to go back through and um, and split them up so that there's more of a mix. But I have stuff like this that was shirts. These were shirts I got at the thrift store. And, um, and I just cut up pieces of the fabric and I bought them when I did, I used them on the jelly plate and you could use these on the jelly plate too. In fact, you could put this, you know, put them together with some other stuff just for fun texture to use on the jelly plate. But I think they're great for clusters and using in uh, junk journals. So, um, so there'll be some of this kind of stuff. So this is also a shirt, but it's gorgeous fabric. And I used this in a collage in my, in my fabric journal and if you're going to be doing fabric journals and things like that, um, this is, you know, this kind of stuff is fun. This was a shirt. And I got it because it, specifically because it had sailboats on it at the thrift store. And I cut it up and I've already used one. And I'm putting some of it in here. Here's another piece of lace. This isn't fancy lace. It's not expensive lace. Um, but it looks pretty and it's fun on the jelly plate. This is um, this is just a piece of a skirt. It's got a little bit of trim on it, and it's got some pretty flowers on it. Um, so I, I I'm I like to harvest things like that and use them because I can. This was a scarf, and it's a pretty scarf. It's very thin, so it's um, you know it it will lay down um, easily, or you can put it over stuff or under stuff. This was part of a jacket. Um, things like this, I'm not sure. I may cut it like this, and then you could also make a small journal cover out of it. Um, this was part of a shirt, but it has a cute little butterfly on it. This was part of some pants, but I was wanting some fabrics that I could use to make journals for men if I decided to sell journals. And so I've got some, um, some very business looking journals, not that men wouldn't like some of the other stuff we do, but, um, but some, some men would prefer to carry around something like this. So I've got some of this stuff in there. This is corduroy jean out of some pants. This was part of a curtain. And I don't have a whole lot of that, this kind of stuff in here right now, but I am going to add some more when I make the packets up. I just, um, I just haven't had a chance to go through everything yet. This is some fabric and this is a special piece. Um, and I, but because it was in my stash, I just kept half of it and I'm sharing half of it. It's pretty. This Barb Filion sent this to me. Um, and I love it. But I'm putting, um, I'll probably cut this these in half. I have, think I had four of them. I'll probably cut them in half so they're a little bit smaller because, uh, but they make, they, I think those make gorgeous pockets in a journal.
Okay. Here, I'm going to go ahead and look at these real quick first because um, I don't have a lot of these. So this is um, just going to be the luck of the draw. Some lucky person will get some of this. And I may cut it right here so I can give it to more people too since I'm going to be... Um, since I'm going to be doing it different than I did when I was fixing these all up. And this is just denim fabric. It's from the same jacket. This is another one. And I may also, you know, split it in half so that two people can be, have that. And these were the, the, um, this is the collar on this one. And this was a cuff. So somebody will be lucky enough to get that. So, um, you may or may not have this in your package when it comes, because like I said, I'm going to package up as many of these as I can, and then I'm just going to grab a package and put a name on it so that I'm not, um, not, you know, showing favoritism or anything like that. It's just going to be what it is when you get it, but I am going to try to mix them up pretty good so that you can get a bunch of different stuff. And I'll, this is another one that I'll cut into at least one size smaller, um, maybe even to four pieces so more people can have a little bit of it. I hesitate to cut them too small because of wanting you to be able to make a journal cover out of them if you want to. So it's hard to, it's hard to decide. This one might can be split in half and still make a good journal cover. This is... Um, I think this is drapery fabric. It has a stiffer feel to it than the upholstery fabric. This is some upholstery fabric. This is just some pumpkins. This is a part of a sample of upholstery fabric. Some of these I didn't have very big pieces to begin with, and so only there's only a couple of pieces. These two, I know, there's only a couple of these um, even in there because the pieces weren't very big to begin with. This is the same way. In fact, there may only be one of these because um, it was small to begin with. And this is one, I'll, I will probably cut this one in half and send it some to two different people. I want to be as fair as I can. I want as many people to get as many different things as they can. Now that I've changed, changed my plan, I'm wanting to make it, I'm wanting to make it fair. I, that was part of my plan from the beginning. The way I was doing this was trying to make it fair. This is one that I will, um, I will definitely I'll cut this one into four pieces because it's pretty big. Because um, I want you to think of these not as, um, I don't know, pieces of fabric, but as pieces of mixed media um, supplies. I have a few of these. These are truly fabric samples. Um, and I think these are curtain fabric samples. And I will put one of these in each bag for as many as I have. I have a few more in another bag. This is a napkin. I just had one. I just stuck it in here. This is some wild fabric. If you're doing boho, that would be fun, wouldn't it? That's just an orange. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It's a, some kind of upholstery fabric. It's probably, um, it'd make a good journal cover to embellish or to sew on to. Here's some... Um, some ivy curtain fabric. 
this was just part of a shirt. But I thought it would be um, a good basis for flowers or um, something. This is another shirt. And I just thought the, the pa pattern on it was really pretty. This was part of a, a curtain. This is part of the same curtain. In fact, it was two, two, it was two colors. This was part of a shirt. A, uh, I guess it's really kind of a, yeah. I don't know if you call it a shirt or a jacket. Um, but wouldn't that be fun to do? I don't know, you, you know, do a journal cover out of or something. Um, This is um, some more lightweight upholstery fabric. This was, um, I'm not sure if these were placemats napkins I've got another one somewhere that I'll cut in half this is just half of one but I've got another one I'll cut in half so three people will get some of that this is some more um, lace from a shirt that is fun to make flowers out of or use on the jelly plate here's some more of that um, fabric I got if I wanted to make a more masculine journal this is all I have of this so I'll probably cut it into three pieces. Um, let me get something to show you real quick. This is what I made my dragonfly out of for my fabric journal. So, um, so think outside the box. When you find something like this and you think, oh, that is so ugly. <laughs> it might make pretty dragonfly wings. <laughs> And this is the kind of thing I'm thinking about people can do with this. This is, you know, a cut piece of, of um, embroidery. I mean, crochet lace. This green is upholstery fabric. In here, I have some pieces of stuff. This is a piece of a shirt. You can even still see where the stitching is. This is part of a napkin. These are just some embellishments that were I found at the thrift store. This is where I used that fabric I was telling you about and made a collage. This is some upholstery fabric. I've got some of this in in the bags. Um, and then I made, I put cut flowers out of some other fabric and glued them down. And then my daughter made me some butterflies to go on there. This is out of that same shirt. I showed you that red um, lacy stuff a little bit ago. And this is fabric um, strips. I have some of these that I can um, put in. I only have enough to put them in one or two bags so if you want some of these fabric strips um let me know and i will add them to your bag the first two people who ask for them i will add some of those into your bag this was um what i got in my fabric swap with don boss isn't it beautiful this has been a fun book here's what you can do with little bits a crazy quilt um this was so much fun i love that i think that's my favorite page <coughs> you can also use little bits of fabric and make um, this was slow stitching I had a lot of fun making that and adding it to my journal so if you if you're interested in making a journal like this um, and you're part if you're part of Jerry uh, Jerry's zoom group at uh, recycle parts for arts for art um, I'm going to be doing a fabric journal in July in her zoom group so um, these would be great fabrics for you to get started on that okay this is probably the world's ugliest shirt but um, but as you can see it's got a pattern on it and um, I've used it on the jelly plate and it was fun it might also be fun um, you know as the back piece of part of a flower or something or to make leaves out of it to go with the flower um, who knows? This is some more of that same shirt I showed you earlier. Here's some black lace. I only have a, I think I only have one of these. 
I might cut it in half so two people can have some. <coughs> this is some velvety type stuff with a little bit of lace on it. That was a camisole. Here's another one, little bit. When you're doing mixed media, um, you've already seen those. This is uh, the lining from a jacket. It's black, silk, um, silky stuff. But if you take it and you rip it, um, you can use it in a tag, like um, kind of like you would sorry silk. And I've done that not only with that, but with these. These were um, the lining to a coat that I got um, at the thrift store. And I've ripped some of those and made them into, um, this is another one, made them into little pieces that I could um, put on tags. So, you know, a lot of things are, um, you can do a lot of different stuff with this fabric that, um, unless you're a mixed media junk journaler, <laughs> you probably haven't really thought about um, doing. I'm going to go ahead and show this stuff. This is the stuff I got out last night um, because I found yet another box. This is a piece of um, lacy stuff. It's real stretchy. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's pretty. It would be pretty, um, you know, as part of a journal. Um, it would also be pretty on the jelly plate, which is, of course, why I bought it. When I look at fabric, um, all of these are that way. When I look at fabric, my first thought is, ooh, jelly plate. And then I think, oh, I could cut out those flowers and, and glue them down on something. And this is another one of those things. Um, it was part of a shirt, a little skinny strap shirt. This one too. But the textures, um, the textures are fun. And that would be fun in a in a journal or on a jelly plate. And I think I've already shown you this one. This one was fun and I bought it purely because I, I just thought it was fun. <laughs> so I kept some of it and some of it will go in here. And this may be the only piece I've got of that in here. Um, I'm not positive, but I think that's it. So some lucky person will get this. I'd like to see what you do with it if you get it. Here's some more just cotton fabric. And some upholstery fabric. Some more denim. A different kind of upholstery fabric. Um, some pumpkins upholstery fabric. That's very soft. This has um, some little sunflowers on it. It's... Um, it's kind of a slicky fabric. It's not cotton. I'm not sure what it is. This was part of a vest, and I thought it would be fun. You can see that those ruffles are just sewn down, that you can trim in between them, and then take that piece of ruffle and glue it down onto your whatever you've got going on. Um, that's what I kept some of it for me to do that, and I've got four or five pieces in here for that. This was some upholstery fabric. It's not a very big piece, but it's a fun piece. And I have, I think, two or three of these. Um, okay. Let's go ahead. I didn't have these even in a bag because I just messed with them last night. And I still haven't gotten through all of that kind of lacy jelly plate stuff, so... Okay, these you've already seen. This is another shirt. Um, it's got some embroidery kind of stuff on it. And it's a crinkly fabric. I don't know if you can really see what it looks like. It's kind of, it's a dark gray. Um, oh, there we go. You can see better on this side. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. There's some more of those. Um, and here's a, just a piece of this, which <laughs> is a fun piece. When I saw this at the thrift store, it was just like three pieces this big. Um, I thought how fun it would be to put it in my 
um, my big shot and cut flowers out of these. I don't know what you'll decide to do with it, but that's what I was thinking. And I've already shown you that. Here's another piece of fabric. And here's one more. Okay, I just have a few more bags to show you real quick. But I really want you to thoroughly see what I've got. Because, I, like I said, I don't want you to be disappointed about what's in your bag. This is one I will cut up the smaller pieces so more people can have it. But this was, as you can see, a sleeve to a jacket. I will cut these smaller as well. Like I said, when I, when I was putting these together... I had a whole different plan for how I was going to get them out to people in mind. And so, um, so I'm having to redo everything, but, um, that one is a lot of fun. That's the one I used in here under my, um, under my flowers. This is a pretty piece. I'll cut it too. Cause it was the only one I had like it. And this was the, all I had of this one that I, except for my half. Um, this one probably will go just like it is. Um, and what, just one person will be lucky enough to get it because um, it could be a pillow front if you wanted it to. And any way I cut it, I would have to cut the birds. And I don't want to do that. So um, somebody will get the lucky draw and get that piece. This is a piece of upholstery fabric that I, um, I washed and it looks actually, um, it doesn't, it's kind of all wrinkled up and, um, it's got a great texture to it because of that, but it wasn't originally like that. And that's when I decided I wasn't washing any more upholstery fabric. It's just the way I got it. Um, that's upholstery fabric. This is another one of those napkins that I said I would, um, probably cut in half and send, um, so, so that I could send it to two people. I may even cut it into quarters. We'll see. Kind of depends on how my piles are looking. I'm planning to um, make at least 20 piles. I've, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do 30 to begin with. And then if, if 30 piles will not fill up those, bo those flat rate envelopes, then I will, um, I will take 10 of those piles or five or whatever I need um, to shrink it down, you know, to be able to, um, to fill up the rest of them because I want to send them out full. Um, these are some Christmas fabrics. This is some of that fabric, this cotton fabric that was, um, oh, and this was actually with this so you got your watermelon um yellow purple flowers daisies and these pieces are big enough i'll probably cut them in half because once again i wasn't thinking about giving trying to spread them out among everybody this is um it's a knit fabric but it's cute Katie wants me to eat it, I guess. It keeps jumping out. I hope that it will be a blessing to everybody um, to get little bits and bobs like this. I think they'll be a lot of fun to use. And when they're small, it's easier to think of things to do with them because you're not cutting into a big piece of fabric and ruining it. <laughs> So I'm hoping that the fact that it is small pieces will help too. This is one I will probably cut in half right there. So one person will get this and the other person will get this. Well. 
And I have a bunch of these, and I may just throw one in every packet. <laughs> it's a, just a piece of felt. It's very soft. Um, you could use it for whatever you want. I just threw some in here because this packet needed something else. And here's some chickens. And here's some more of those um, samples. Like I said, when I lay these out, I'm going to have to lay them all out on my bed, I think, in order to have a space big enough to just 30 piles. I'll make sure and get one of these in every packet that I have um, that I, for as many as I've got. This is another one that I'll probably cut in half. I love that fabric. This is the trees that I used Where is it? right here. And then I just colored over them with green. It came, that was this fabric. But I colored it all to make it look like it went more with, well, there's another piece of that stuff. This is a small, I think I only have a couple of these. This is a small piece of the fabric I made pillows for my daughter's bed with. This is, um, this is a piece of the same fabric that I used um, here as the background for my cover on my journal. Two more packets and we'll be through. I'll cut that one in half so that two people can have some. And these the same way, these flowery ones. Oh, come on, Lisa. I tried to fold things neatly. They hadn't been folded neatly in my box. <laughs> So I was hoping if I folded them neatly, they would press out a little bit. These are also, I think, they're upholstery fabric or curtain fabric. This is just some cotton fabric, but it's fun. I think I might, yeah, I have two of these. See, you're limited only by your imagination because there's just all kinds of weird stuff in here. <laughs> stuff that you probably wouldn't go out and buy, you know, to upholstery your fabric, your furniture with, but might be fun in journals. I know you've already seen that one. And you've already seen that one. I don't know if you've seen this one or not. I only have two of these. Um, that's a fun piece. Look at the way it is on the back. That's expensive fabric when it's woven like that. I'm not sure what that is. It feels like uh, it may be upholstery, but it feels like it would be curtains to me. I certainly wouldn't want to sit on something like that that does that. And you've seen that. There's um, just three little pieces of this, but it's pretty upholstery fabric. It's real plush. I wouldn't mind having something made out of that. And this was one of the packets that there was three of everything in here. So three people get chances at, at these things. Well, everybody gets a chance, I guess, but three people will actually get them. <laughs> I 
I like this one too. That one's big enough to make a journal cover with. I think that would make a pretty journal cover. I'm going to leave it like it is. There's three of those. So this is really shiny and pretty. Feels nice. This is another little piece of that other stuff. I did this one before I found the big pieces. <laughs> this is um, some kind of weird upholstery fabric, but um, I think it's cute. It's just really old fashioned. There's some more of the ivy and some more of this and some more of that. So. Okay, well, uh, that's a long video, and I, if you sat through it all, God bless you, and I hope that you found enough stuff in that those packages that you think a grab bag would be fun. Um, when I run out of grab bags, I'll let everybody know, but um, I think I'm going to have at least 20, so um, God bless you, and uh, email me, not Facebook, email. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.